Hey everyone, so in this video I want to look at action potentials and specifically I want to look at the differences between action potentials in a pacemaker cell compared to action potentials in just a regular cardiac muscle cell. However, I think it's easier to understand action potentials if you first remember the regular vanilla action potential that you learned, which was probably skeletal muscle or nervous. So to understand how action potentials work, first you need to remember that on the outside of a cell you have more sodium. On the inside of a cell you have more potassium. And also on the outside of a cell, the cell membrane is a little bit more positively charged compared to the inside of the cell, which is a little bit more negatively charged. So there is a difference between the charges in the inside and outside. So we say that the cell membrane is polarized because if you're polar, you're different. So that is what the action potential graph is actually measuring is the difference of charge between the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell. And quick note, um, you might be saying, well, if potassium is positive, why is there a negative charge on the inside of the cell? The negative charge has nothing to do with the potassium. There are other things on the inside of the cell giving the inside of the cell more of a negative charge. We just don't care about them for the action potential, besides the fact that they make the inside more negative. Okay. The next thing you need to understand is what even is an action potential. So you can think of an action potential like an electrical impulse that is moving as a wave through a cell. And eventually these action potentials will cause muscle contraction. So when you're looking at this graph, picture a crowd in a stadium doing the wave this is one part of the crowd standing up and doing the wave. And like I said before, the membrane potential is what we're measuring, the difference between the inside and the outside. So at rest, which is number one on the graph, we're flatlining in a skeletal muscle. That is our resting membrane potential. The cell membrane is polarized. All of the channels are closed. Number two on the graph is threshold. Uh, once you reach threshold, that is when your channels are going to open to cause the next phase. So phase one, we are polarized, we're resting. Phase three is called depolarizing because we're no longer different. So during depolarization, the sodium channels open and that causes all of that sodium to rush into the cell. So the sodium rushes in causing the inside of the cell to become more positive. So depolarization, we're becoming less different. That's the part we care about. Um, that's the part that has an effect. The next part, repolarizing, is just resetting the cell so you can get another action potential. So to repolarize, how is that going to happen? Something has to move in or out of the cell. So what channels will open to cause repolarization? You might think, oh, the sodium channels will open and the sodium will go out. No, because if you open the sodium channels, there's still more sodium on the outside, more will come in. 
So what you have to do is open the potassium channels and opening the potassium channels will allow all of that potassium to rush out and all of those positive things leaving the cell makes the inside of the cell more negative again. So we're repolarizing, becoming different again. The last part of the action potential, you see there's a dip where we're further away from threshold, we are more negative than we were to start with. So we call that hyperpolarization because you're more polarized than you were when you started. Um, and this happens because the potassium channels keep leaving the cell um, and those channels stay open past what it would take to take you back just to normal resting. And how do we get back to resting? And how do we get the sodium and potassium back to where it started? You have sodium potassium pumps. So those sodium potassium pumps are creating the gradient because they're pumping sodium out and potassium in. So how this manages to spread like a wave is when you depolarize in one part of a cell, that change in electrical charge causes the sodium channels to open in the next part of the cell. And once those sodium channels open, you create an action potential in the next part of the cell. So it really just spreads like dominoes down the cell membrane. So before we move on, just want to drive home. The pattern you're seeing here is sodium in causes depolarization, potassium out, repolarization. Okay, so when we're looking at the pacemaker cell, the pacemaker cells are non-contractile cardiac myocytes. Non-contractile, they do not contract. Um, cardiac myocyte, myo is muscle, site is cell. It's just a type of cardiac muscle cell that is specialized and doesn't contract. So these are all of the cells of the intrinsic conduction system, the SA node, AV node, AV bundle, all of those are pacemaker cells. So the reason that they're special is they never flatline. They're always doing something. They're never at rest. So I'll explain that in a second, but before I do, it's very similar to the pattern with skeletal muscle. The one big difference is now calcium is going to become involved in our action potential. So the pacemaker cells always have this slow depolarization towards threshold. That slow depolarization is caused by sodium channels becoming open, and that slow influx of sodium brings you to threshold. The sodium channels open in response to hyperpolarization from the previous action potential. So the end of one action potential starts the next action potential, that's how it's able to generate its own action potentials without needing input from an outside source, namely the brain. Your skeletal muscle cannot do this. It needs the brain to tell it when it's time to contract. 
All right, so we're slowly depolarizing towards threshold, which will begin our action potential. When we get there, the calcium channels open. And the calcium, as I mentioned, is on the outside of the cell. There's more of it on the outside. So when those channels open, all that positive calcium rushes in, causing depolarization. Repolarization occurs when those calcium channels close. And what's going to open? The potassium channels, just like the skeletal muscle. So the opening of the potassium channels causes repolarization and also it drops down to a point that we call hyperpolarization and that hyperpolarization opens up the sodium channels to begin the pacemaker potential to start the next action potential. All right, so now we're looking at the action potential in the actual cardiac muscle cell, AKA the contractile myocytes. So they are responding to the action potentials in the intrinsic conduction system. Those are the pacemaker cells we were just talking about. In terms of the ions that are present, in terms of you know the charged particles, it's the same setup where we have calcium on the outside, sodium on the outside, and potassium on the inside. So depolarization is occurring um, when voltage-gated sodium channels open. So most of the channels I've talked about are voltage-gated. I'm just saying it for the first time. Voltage gated means that they open in response to a change in electrical charge. So the change in electrical charge caused by the pacemaker cells causes voltage gated sodium channels to open in the regular cardiac muscle cells. Those voltage gated channels open and cause depolarization when all that positive sodium rushes into the cell. This part of the graph you're seeing we're kind of very slightly repolarizing. That is because the sodium channels are closing, some potassium channels open, so you have some of that positive potassium leaving the cell. However, that is very quickly negated by calcium channels opening. So the calcium channels open, causing all of that positive stuff to enter the cell and preventing the cell from repolarizing back down to resting. So those calcium channels open, calcium enters the cell, um, and it causes this thing which we call the plateau phase. So the plateau phase extends the absolute refractory period. During this time, another action potential cannot be received by the heart muscle. So between depolarization and repolarizing, the cell cannot receive another action potential. And the reason that we don't want to receive another action potential too quickly, there are a lot of reasons, but the one I'm going to talk about is it prevents tetany, which is when your muscle is completely contracted. You never want the heart muscle to be completely contracted um, because then you're not relaxing and allowing the heart time to fill with blood that you need to be pumping throughout your body.
So that really extends the amount of time it takes to complete the action potential. Um, when those calcium channels close, the rest of the potassium channels are starting to open, which causes repolarization. And step four, um, after we're repolarized, we're just returned to resting and ready for another action potential.